Hi, I'm Carl. In this video, we're going to have a look at section three, questions one to four in the green booklet. This is a question about the development of mice embryos in the uterus. So this is quite a complicated question. We're given quite a lot of information and I've copied out a rough version of the diagram that we're given. Question one says, of the following information presented suggests most strongly that in mice, differential development of sexual characteristics in members of the same sex is a result of differences in what? So looking at the diagram um, that they've given, we can see that there is a distribution of the males and the females. So we'll work that out first. In the last line of the question, we're told that embryo nine is one M. We're told embryo seven is two M. We're told four is two F. And we're told two is one F. Confusingly, F means male, in this case, an M means female. The numbers before um, just give an extent to the masculinity or femininity of the secondary sexual characteristics. We're given a couple of rules as how we can work out um, what the other letters and numbers are. So we know that if there is a female mouse like this one, that's 2M, that means there has to be a male on either side. A male is denoted by F, so we know that there's going to be an F on either side. Similarly, on the other side, we have a 2F here, which means there's going to be two females on either side. So that's going to be an M on either side then. And finally, we know that if there is a 1F or a 1M, there has to be one of each gender on each side. So on this side, there's a male missing, and on this one, there's a female missing. So now we've got an idea of what all the letters are. That's sort of more important than the numbers, because we're asked about the differential development of secondary sexual characteristics. And we can tell that it looks fairly random. And going through the options, A says uterine temperature. Really what you need to be thinking is, would uterine temperature cause a distribution like we see here now? Um, not really. B says location of the embryo with respect to the ovary. So in the diagram, the ovaries are over here, just above. And we can see that there's um, a sort of a, a strange pattern here and it doesn't tend to be symmetrical towards the top. C says the levels of maternally produced hormones reaching the embryos. The diagram does a better job of showing this that's um, given than the one I've drawn, but it shows that how they all share blood supply um, coming essentially from the ovaries. And we can see that, or from the placenta, of course. Um, and what that shows is that they all share the same blood supply and that wouldn't be the thing that would cause this differential development. D finally says the levels of embryo produced hormones reaching adjacent embryos. And from what we've read, we can assume this is the right answer because the rules of how you could work out what F and M and the numbers are, are based on what's around it. And so we know that the embryos that are adjacent to each other do affect each other. So we can say the answer for number one is definitely D. Number two says of embryos one, two, three, four, and five, how many are male? Now, remembering that F means male, we can just count the Fs, and we've got three in this case, which means the answer for two is going to be A. Three says, of the following embryos, which one will develop the most feminine features? So this one can be a bit confusing because it makes it seem a little subjective, um, given that we're given different numbers. So we know that um, a 2F is going to be more feminine than a 1F, but if they're female, they're going to be more feminine than either because they have the primary sexual characteristics of a female as well. So those features will be more feminine and the males, no matter how um, big the number before F is, they still won't um, have those features. So the most feminine ones will be the females. So out of these two options, we're looking at two, four, nine, and 10. We can say that nine and 10 are the only females and the least feminine one will be the zero M one here. So we know that the most feminine one in this case is going to be answer D, embryo 10. Then number four says, in mice, the primary sexual characteristics of an individual are determined by what? So genotype hormones or an interaction between hormones and the genotype or none of the above. Okay, well, we know that sexual characteristics of all mammals are through the genotype. It's the sex chromosomes which determine the gender of the, or the sex of the organism. And so we can say that the same will apply in mice um, the primary sexual characteristics are determined by the genotype, which is answer A. So that was 
questions one to four of section three of the Green Booklet. I hope you find that useful.